This video is about AWS Client VPN, so how to connect with the cloud. So this is perfect for remote workers or whoever needs access to AWS or on-premises networks. I wanted to dive into that service because over the past month, AWS announced new features and the service matured. Um, so I think it's worth having a look into the service now. So what is this video all about? So first of all, we'll talk a little bit about what is AWS Client VPN, how does it work? I will show you how you can install the VPN client, how everything works from an end user perspective. We will discuss some network scenarios that you can implement with AWS Client VPN. And I will show you how to configure Client VPN together with Azure Active Directory to use that for single sign-on. So that's, I think, really cool. And at the end, I have some independent insights into AWS Client VPN, so things I learned from using the service. Okay, let's get started. So uh, how does AWS Client VPN work? So it is a service for client-to-site VPN connections. So whenever you want to connect, for example, engineers or users to a VPC, this is the service um, that you should have a look at. Um, it allows, for example, DevOps engineers to SSH in two EC2 instances running in private subnets directly, connect to RDS databases, and so on. It's a managed service provided by AWS, so you don't, don't need to have a VPN machine running that you need to manage and operate on your own. It's a fully managed service provided by AWS. Let's have a look into to the feature set. So it's a managed service, um, OpenVPN um, underneath. Uh, it's secure client to site connections with TLS. Um, it is multi-ASAT, so it span, you can span multiple subnets in multiple data centers. It scales automatically, so one client connection to thousands of client connections is no problem uh, with the service. For the authentication, um, it works with Active Directory, federated authentication with SAML, and you can also use uh, certificate-based authentication. So that are the different options uh, that are available right now. In the first demo, I want to show you how everything works from an end user perspective. So how does a DevOps engineer, for example, connect to a VPC to SSH into an EC2 instance? So how does that work? So it all starts with the so-called self-service portal for the VPN client. So what users can fetch from there is, first of all, the VPN configuration, that's a configuration file, and then the VPN client itself for Windows or OS X. And by the way, you can use any other OpenVPN compatible clients as well, but that's what AWS provides um, by default. Okay, the next step is you install and start a VPN client. And then uh, what you can do is you can add a profile, let's call it demo, and you import the configuration file that you have downloaded. So that's it. And now you're ready co to connect uh, with the VPN. Okay, the VPN client now says it is connected. So let's prove that and SSH into an EC2 instance running in the VPC. I'm copying the private IP address here, SSH into that machine, and it works. So we have a network connection from my um, MacBook to the VPC that this EC2 instance runs in. So yeah, that's exactly what we expected, right? A short recap of what we are doing in the demo. So users connect to the self-service portal where they can fetch their VPN client and the configuration. They use that VPN client to establish a network, a VPN connection, and then they're able to uh, connect with the VPC and for example, SSH into an EC2 instance. Next, I want to discuss different scenarios uh, when to use the AWS Client VPN, so diff different networking scenarios um, where this is interesting. So first scenario is what we already discussed. You need to get a network access for your users to a certain VPC. So this can be DevOps engineers, but it could also be uh, for end users that need to access a certain internal application that is running inside that VPN. So this is the standard scenario, I would say. Also, you can use client VPN if users have to access a peered VPC. So because client VPN creates an, an elastic network interface in the VPC, you can reach peered VPCs from that as well. So it also works with peering. 
Um, a similar scenario is when you have a site-to-site -site VPN connection between your VPC and your corporate data center, your on-premises networks, you can also use client VPN for that. So this would be as a remote worker, you could even get all your remote workers connected via AWS client VPN to a VPC and then have only one single side-to-side uh, -side connection, VPN connection, or even um, a direct connect connection um, that then connects the VPC with your corporate data center. And by doing so, you can basically outsource all that client VPN stuff to AWS. That might be an interesting op option for uh, remote workers as well. Um, you can also use uh, AWS Client VPN the same way you use those um, end user uh, centric uh, services that provide VPN access to basically go around geo restrictions and stuff like that. So in theory, you could use AWS Client VPN for that as well, because in every region, you can spin up your client VPN endpoint, and then you can connect to that and you can connect to the internet from that VPC as well. So that is possible. Um, but oftentimes you don't want to route the internet traffic from your users over the VPN connection. And that is um, where split tunnel comes into play. Also supported by AWS client VPN, you can set up split tunneling. That means only the traffic, um, to, for example, in your VPC gets uh, routed over the VPN connection. Everything else to the internet goes uh, directly to the internet not going through your VPN infrastructure, that reduces costs uh, a lot because you have to pay for the traffic that goes through the AWS networks. Okay, those are um, a few network scenarios that you can use client VPN for. I think it's a very interesting service that can replace um, easy to instances where you have been operating your own um, VPN service. So personal me and Michael, we have been doing that a lot. We have even CloudFormation templates for that. And it's definitely time to replace that with the managed AWS client uh, service. Next, I want to show you um, how the authentication part works with AWS client VPN. And I've chosen to do uh, it with an Azure Active Directory. So I'm using SAML. You can use it to connect to other identity providers as well, but that's the example that I took. So let's have a look at the bigger picture here. So um, the scenario is you have users that should be able to connect to a VPC over a VPN connection. So we talked about the self-service portal, the client VPN, everything. Now the question is, how do those users authenticate themselves? And I think one interesting option is um, to use SAML for that. And you can use that, for example, to uh, connect to an Azure Active Directory. I think that's a popular one, because that's why I've chosen that example. So it works like that. Your users start a VPN client, and then they get redirected to uh, SSO with Azure Active Directory, where they type in their username and password. They go back to the VPN client, which then establishes the connection. And AWS Client VPN makes sure um, that those credentials are valid and only then uh, lets people into your networks and establish a VPN connection. By the way, it even goes further than that. You can have groups in Azure AD that then uh, authorize users to access certain areas of your networks only. So that's the the um, the advanced feature that you can here have here as well. And of course, you can have not only access to your VPC, you could also have access to Internet Gateway and the Internet as well. So um, that's what I want to demo next. So we have to have a look at two different things. One is the VPC endpoint configuration. So this is uh, something that you configure in your VPC, in the VPC service. You can find um, client VPN endpoints in here. And I've already set this up. It took me about two hours, so I'm not going through every detail uh, how to set up the whole thing here, but I will link the relevant blog posts and documentations um, in the notes uh, attached to that video. So you can get all the information that you need. And if you have any questions or problems, feel free to, to write in. Um, but what I wanted to show you is uh, when you create a client VPN endpoint, um, and let's do quickly do that, uh, you give it a name and you give it uh, IP address ranges. You have to specify a certificate for that. And um, then you can choose that you want to have user-based authentication. And basically now you can have federated authentication with SAML. And that's what we want uh, to have a look in at today. So 
uh, I will first go over the configuration that I have. So this is a client VPN endpoint. I have set up federated authentication. We will quickly jump into that. Um, I have specified the DNS server of the VPC as the DNS server for um, the VPN clients as well. Um, I'm using the details um, a lot and uh, I've enabled CloudWatch so you can get logs about the VPN connections in there. I've disabled split tunnel here and I've enabled the self-service portal. That is what we have already uh, seen. Okay. And then it is important to associate it subnets to the client VPN endpoint. Um, associate in a subnet means um, those are the subnets that clients that connect with the VPN can um, connect to. Um, it also uh, says the or also defines the availability zones that you run in. So you can attach one subnet per availability zone in here. So I have done two to have um, multi AZ, but I haven't much more than that because I don't need it in here. Okay, um, so that is the configuration of uh, the client VPN endpoint. But what is also important is um, you can define a root table in here. So basically here you specify when a VPN client connects and wants to talk to a certain IP address, um, is that possible? And when, if yes, how do you route that? So for example, this is the internal VPC network for both subnets. And I've also added uh, a route to the internet. Um, so then that goes through the internet gateway. So this is something you can explicitly allow or deny by adding a route to the root table here. Um, by the way, authorization, um, this is also something you can do. I, I talked about that you can have groups um, connected to uh, certain uh, networks. So only allow certain groups, for example, of Azure Active Directory to talk to certain IP address ranges. In my case, I've just allowed everything in here uh, for a simple example. Okay, so this is the um, client VPN endpoint. And um, that is up and running. This is then managed by AWS. I don't need to care uh, a lot about that. And um, now I think the interesting part is how to set up the SUML integration with Active uh, Directory, with Azure Active Directory. And this is very similar to another video that I've done before. So you can check that out as well. This is AWS SSO with SUML and then Active, Azure Active Directory was an example in there as well. It works very similar, um, but yeah, let's quickly go over it. So. Um, what you need to do is, um, first of all, you need to go to the Identity and Access Management Service because there um, you need to create a so-called identity provider uh, for everything. And that identity provider is then intended for um, client VPN. So I've created that one. The type is SUML. And basically the next step is to switch over to um, Azure Active Directory and to configure the application in there. So in Azure, you have to configure the Azure Active Directory. Let's do that. And basically what you have to do, the most important thing is you create a so-called enterprise application. And if you do so, you click on new application. And the good news is if you type AWS client VPN in here, there's a pre-configured profile for that that you can use already. So you can just use that and create an enterprise application based on that. So that is uh, very cool because many of the problems are already solved in there. So after creating the enterprise application and after setting up SUML um, between AWS and Azure Active Directory, you can add users and groups to the enterprise application. And um, this allows only users in certain groups or users that you specify as individuals to access the client VPN uh, later. So for example, I'm selecting myself here and um, giving me default access. And now my user is allowed and a, a group named AWS inside Azure Active Directory is allowed to use um, the client VPN. And I think that's really cool because you can manage that at a central place um, very easily. Okay, after you've set up everything correctly, let's, let's have a look in how this looks like from the end user perspective again. So I didn't show that in the first demo, so let's do it here. So if you connect the VPN client, Basically, what's happened is the browser uh, is opening up and asks you to log in with your Microsoft with your Azure Active Directory account. And that's what I'm doing here. Okay, you click on sign in and then you get redirected back 
to your VPN client. Let's see how this goes. Um, and now it says connected. So now I'm connected to the VPN uh, and the authentication authorization happened uh, over Azure Active Directory. And I think that's really a cool thing because it's now really easy to provide people and teams access to certain VPCs. I hope you enjoyed the demo. Next, I want to dive into the details that you not notice right from reading the documentation, but that pop up when using the service. First of all, I did a benchmark. I did a network benchmark and try to find out what's the bandwidth that you can expect from one VPN client going over AWS VPN client connecting to a resource in your VPC. And I did a benchmark between two EC2 instances that were connected, connected one VPC over a client VPN connection with another VPC. And I measured about 300 megabits per second per client. So this was the throughput that I could achieve uh, with the managed service. I think that's probably fine. I think I'm, I'm totally happy with those numbers. Couldn't detect anything here. Next, I want to talk about um, the certificate. So um, the client VPN uses TLS for encrypting the VPN uh, traffic. So you need to have a certificate in place. And I started with um, certificate, a public certificate created and managed by the Amazon Certificate Manager, but this caused some troubles with the certificate chain. And that's why I switched to um, using ECRSR. So this is a GitHub repository. You'll find the links to that in the um, description for this video. And um, I used that to create self-signed certificates that are optimized for what we need here. Uh, so this was much easier. And then I uploaded or imported those into the Amazon Certificate Manager. This worked much better out of the box. And then there's another important thing. Um, if you plan to use AWS Client VPN with a lot of clients, uh, you should uh, think about that. So AWS Client VPN supports one subnet per availability zone. So that means depending on the region, that is something between two and five, I think. So the region defines the maximum number of availability zones, which also defines the maximum subnets that you can attach to a client VPN endpoint. And now it gets tricky because the number of attached subnets define the maximum VPN connections that can connect to the VPC endpoint. <laughs> so this is interesting. So with one subnet is 7,000, with two it's uh, 36,500 and so on. So if you have really a large installation, you should check that out and you should think, What's the region? How many availability zones does it provide? And from there on, you can um, make the math and see if that works uh, for you. Next, about the monthly costs. So what does, what does it all cost? So um, a production-ready setup, multi-A set, so that means two subnets associated in two availability zones, starts at about $150 per month. Um, so this is uh, for yeah, production workloads and the, the minimum fee. And then you pay on top of that, you pay for each um, VPN connection hour, uh, uh, I would say a quite a small fee. Also remember that you pay for the traffic. So the traffic to AWS, uh, into AWS is free, but the traffic back uh, has a charge. So um, you should take that into consideration as well. Do you have any questions? If so, please go to community.cloudrun.io. You will find this video posted in there, and that's the perfect place to ask your questions about client VPN. I'm happy to answer them. I'm happy to join a discussion about everything, about alternatives and so on. And the whole community can profit from that. So I'm looking forward uh, for you joining there. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.